Where did they go? So it's gotta be, ah, oh, found it. Oh, he's gonna be hard to get. Oh, got him, got him. Where are these other eggs at? Where'd they go? Go. Oh my gosh, how did I lose it again? Where is it? Here's a leaf. Oh gosh, okay, there's, there's another one. Oh, okay. Yeah, I knew I was, this was too good to be true. Um, I'm dealing with squash bugs. I've been dealing with squash bugs for now five days and I haven't found a few in a few days. And just saw them in the corner of my eye. No, 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 no. Ah, got two, okay. This one leaf has so, oh, so many eggs on it. Wow. Wow, there's three clusters on this leaf. Look at that. Oh my gosh. I have literally been checking. These had to have been just laid. Goodness. Look at that. And another cluster too wow i'm like sitting here and i keep looking up and i keep finding more clusters this is one reason i like to this is one reason i like to grow vertically because you can look up under the leaves so much easier and you can see stuff like this so just being out here for five minutes there's one two three four Five, six, and seven, eight, and nine. So I'm gonna have to spend a little bit of time out here and double check everything. I actually have not found a squash bug in a few days and I was like, there's no way I'm getting this lucky. So I pruned off the leaves and I'm just going to take a torch lighter and burn them. Hear how they pop. <laughs> it's actually kind of fun just to let them pop. Um, last year I threw them into soapy water and then I came across this where you can just pop them real fast just to make sure you are killing, killing all of the eggs. You don't have to prune off the leaves. I just find it easier because I found a few of these that were really tall up and it would have been really hard and I didn't even see all the clusters uh, until I took them all down. Like little popcorn it's a good little revenge so i found two adults so far um i put them into the jar so i had a comment on my last video asking why i didn't just give them to the chickens and i was like you know that is a solid point i typically have just been using soapy water because it's a lot easier to grab them real fast and just throw them into soapy water and this is after i have found stuff pretty much every day. I've either found one adult or I have found like a cluster of eggs. Like you can imagine how out of control this would get really fast. Last year, I don't think I caught it as early. This year, I was prepared on the time frame on when they entered my garden last year. I've never had really a big issue with squash bugs. I typically have issues with squ uh, squash vine borer and my vine borer has always took out my squash before the squash bugs have ever entered. So I got a vine borer resistant variety of squash called the honey nut squash. So the last two years I've been dealing with squash bugs because uh, vine borer doesn't mess with that squash, which I like. But squash bugs are honestly very annoying. I found squash bugs being one of those things that when you think there is no more, there's always going to be more. So you still have to be very vigilant on checking everything. So I am moving the leaves around because by doing this, you typically will either find random patches or leaves or you expose the adults um it's a lot there's sometimes where you would never see them in some of these little nooks 
<laughs> my squash is doing really well, so I can't complain. It is starting to travel quite far though, so I have to be careful that I'm kind of looking all over. There has to be more than two adults. Oh, see, I moved that and I found another leaf. And honestly, it's not gonna hurt the plant for me to prune off these leaves. Honestly, it's probably just helping uh, with some of the airflow. Also, always get a different angle because I have not been able to find a single leaf for five minutes and I moved over to the outside and immediately found another leaf. Here's another one. I saw the shadow of the eggs. There we go. I don't know if I am seeing anything else. Oh, geez. Well, I didn't realize that that was going into the green beans. I only found two adults for now. I'm going to double check though here later on, but I'm going to stop for the time being. Here, get them. Look, look, look down. Get them, girls. Good job. It is definitely a July evening. It is hot and it is kind of muggy, but here are two of my Goldie Honey Bear sunflowers that went to seed. I'm going to be planting a few of these today. There was a handful of Goldies that didn't pop up and I'm trying to get all these blooms going into fall. So I got a direct sow a few more. My one plant right here that's been in the front is really clonking out as of this week. We've had a lot of just hot, humid weather and I'll actually take you guys over to the tomatoes in a little bit. My determinant tomatoes, not so much my indeterminates, but my determinants are getting hit with light. All these tomatoes are on the verge of ripening. So these tomatoes might actually come out a little bit sooner than I initially hoped, which I'm a little sad about, but I'm really happy I planted a whole second succession of Romas this year because those plants look really pretty. I planted out eight additional plants, what, like four, four to six weeks ago now, and they're doing really, really good. Yeah, so anyway, I'm getting some fall seeds started today. We're currently sitting 89 days from our first expectant frost here as I'm filming this video. You guys will see it probably a few days later, but that's still a good amount of time, but I need to get cabbage and broccoli and lettuce to pretty much started today. All right, so I am going to start off by making some soil blocks. I'm sure this might take me a little bit of chunk of time. To the potting soil, I added a little bit of worm castings and I'm just going to give this a little bit of a mix. So whenever you're doing any type of soil blocking, you want that soil to be pretty decently wet so it can hold its shape. I don't have any type of fancy remedy other than I use potting soil and make sure it's a certain amount of wetness and then I just make the block. Luckily, if it can hold together, it's good to go, but I feel like it's still a little dry. When doing any type of soil blocking, I love using these mesh trays from Bootstrap Farmer. I will line them with the traditional 1020 tray and it makes it really easy to do bottom watering and it allows the blocks to set up to where the blocks don't get super soaked, but then the blocks also get watered enough. I have found that watering your soil blocks can be tricky to kind of figure out because they do dry up pretty fast. So. Here is what the soil consistency is looking like. You can see if I squeeze hard enough, there's liquid coming out. That is typically how wet you want your potting soil to be when you do this. So when you're doing your soil block, one thing I like to do is you're going to press down and kind of wiggle this little machine. And then when you get down there, so you'll see how you have all these bumps and ridges. I actually like to flip over and kind of pack that down myself just with my finger real fast. So you can see that one had a really big air pocket. And then I'll go through and I'll just repeat, kind of moving it back and forth inside. And then I'll take my hand tool here and I'll kind of scrape off the bottom, kind of like I'm making some bricks. And then all I do is come over here lift up on the soil blocker and we have 
soil blocks. I really love soil blocking for the simplicity and how easy it is to transplant everything out in the garden. There are some things that I do have to put into plastic nursery pots as they grow inside and they're not able to go out yet, but I love soil blocks because you're also able to allow the roots to not be all bound up in a pot. They're able to be more free. So once the root systems go out of the soil block, they kind of just go underneath and they're still loose and they're able to kind of go where they want. And that allows the plant just a lot more air circulation in the roots as well. And I found that you just get a little bit easier or a healthier start. I found typically four to six weeks being a really good mark on how long something can live in a two by two soil block. It is so warm. I wanted to stand up and these trays actually sit on top of this caging perfectly. It sits on the framing. So I'm able to stand up. I also changed into my everyday tank top. I think I've wore in every video lately because it's something I can get really dirty and it has a lot of holes and it's breathable. It's something I've had forever. I love it. I have a really limited closet. I like to keep my closet small. I don't like to think about what I'm going to wear. So I repeat a lot if you haven't noticed, but let's go ahead and seed. I have 72 blocks here. And like I said, I'm going to plant out a lot of this with broccoli. I don't know exactly how many seeds of broccoli I have, but whatever we have, it's just going to get seeded. I'm going to plant whatever I got, which I'm gonna say somewhere close to 30, or I might just do a whole flat, I don't know. Okay, so I'm not gonna plant out too many cabbages. I'm just gonna plant out four of them. I'm definitely planting out more today than I actually need. And then I'm gonna do quite a bit of lettuce. I honestly think I'm probably gonna do most of the rest of this lettuce, and then I'll probably just do a few kale. So everything is planted. I definitely planted some extras. This whole thing is broccoli. I have probably an extra eight broccoli here. It's really going to depend on how the tomatoes play out, but I'd rather be prepared than not be prepared. I did only do four cabbages because I'm really not going to have that much room. Um, three of these beds are going to be devoted to garlic. I forgot to mention, I'm also planting garlic. So I did order soft neck this year. So this will be a new thing I'll be trying. I have always done hard neck and I've ordered a lot of hard neck, but I did look up, um, there was a certain soft neck variety that for this growing area was supposed to do quite well. I can't remember the name, but I'll put it across the stream, the screen. I'll look it up. So I'm going to have three beds already devoted to garlic and I have an area that I can devote three beds to broccoli. Um, so it's really going to be a toss up again with the tomatoes and how many crops I planted out today will really get planted out into the garden. Um, I do have a few pots and certain things that I could also plant out. So that's also an option when it comes to like the lettuces and the greens, I can uh, put them along the edges of some of the insides of my tunnels. Um, so that's also an option. I'm actually glad I did a little bit of extra seed today that way, if for some reason I am able to plant all of this out, we're gonna have a good amount of stuff started. If not, um, I have a few friends I could give some plants to. So that is always an option too. Another option I have when it comes to the lettuce as well is I could just keep it completely inside under lights and it would do just fine, <laughs> which is actually something I have been meaning to do the last three winters and I've gotten lazy and I just haven't had greens in the basement. And then I've had to buy greens. When I have the lights, I have the seeds, I could just have lettuce all the time in my basement. So I might actually do that now that I'm talking out loud. So like I mentioned, there was a few areas that just didn't end up seeding out with the Goldies. So here we go, we got seed. I was thinking I wasn't gonna have any more seed and then this guy was like, nope, you got plenty girl. And I trust these seeds too because that was a volunteer sunflower, so put a few in the ground before I water the garden for the night. I also have this corner over here, and then this one didn't come up, so maybe I'm just going to plant three. Actually, make that four because this area also didn't come up uh, with the drumstick flower that I planted, so I'm just going to put a few here too. Now that the first goldie is starting to die back already, it's just making me like, oh, not my goldie. I must plant so many more goldies. So I stand corrected when it comes to this grass. I've been calling it crab grass and I've had a few people tell me it's Bermuda grass. So 
Apparently it's Bermuda grass. So yeah, this Goldie is definitely no longer in all of her glory. Still pretty though, but I do have one right behind starting to bloom and then this one's starting to bloom. So one thing I really gotta get done this evening is I need to clean out the girl's coop. So I recently just started to play around with hemp bedding versus pine bedding. And let me just tell you, I put one bag in here about what, three weeks ago now, there is still no smell. And the hemp is a lot finer than pine shavings where I can literally sift up the poop. I will say one bag is not enough for the size of their like coop area, which their coop area is, I believe, close to a four by four. It would definitely need two bags. But if I'm able to sift it, it might actually be worth the price because the amount of pine, I was having to change out the pine every week because the pine got really smelly. And honestly, I'm really shocked that the hemp bedding really doesn't have a smell. So, and it's also not dusty like the pine is, so that's really nice. But I think I'm gonna be able to get a lot more life out of this. Like, look, I'm able just to get the poop and scoop out the poop, which is so nice. Obviously, I'm gonna get some shavings, but it's actually probably time to get new nest pads too. I have this little trip door that allows me to brush everything right into a wheelbarrow which is super nice the hemp is really really fluffy some fresh nest pads. I should clean that window, but otherwise we are good to go. Here is a close up of the tomatoes over here in this area. So you can see they are getting hit pretty bad out of nowhere. They were looking really good and now they're really not looking so hot at all. They are all starting to blush quite a bit. So I think I will be able to get a good amount off these tomatoes before the plants really clunk out. These are the Supremos and these are the Plum Regals, which the Plum Regals haven't been giving me as many blush tomatoes yet. I'm starting to get more and more and these ones are starting to do better. I'm starting to get another wave of flowers going on them, but they don't look as hot, but there's not blight on them. And I believe these are the guys that are supposed to be a little bit more blight resistant, but they still don't look the overall best to me. I forgot to check okra this morning and this one definitely got a little bit too big today. I honestly really haven't had much okra that I've been able to do too much with. I freeze dried it last week and I wasn't opposed to that. I actually liked it and I'm typically not an okra person at all because I really don't like the slime, but I really liked how there was another way I could preserve it outside of just freezing it um, instead of canning it because I'm really not going to probably get to can any okra until about another week or two. It's really just now starting to ramp up. I've actually been really loving freeze drying for that reason and just the simplicity of freeze drying over canning. Canning is a lot more difficult and there's a lot more steps you have to follow and you have to have a certain quantity to be able to preserve it. And with freeze drying, you can literally preserve any amount that you want. So for example, I have not told you guys this, but I actually went to can up some salsa and my cat wouldn't leave me alone, unfortunately. And she kept distracting me and distracting me. And I was measuring out how much tomatoes versus jalapenos I had for the ratio of the recipe. I was seeing if I could make a double batch or not a double batch, but I ended up putting in the double amount of tomatoes and not realizing it until right before I canned it. And with canning, you really gotta be particular about your amounts because it can affect the acidity level and safe for water bath canning and all that. So I got kind of frustrated, but then I 
freeze dried it and I have reconstituted the freeze dried uh, salsa and it's actually really good. So I'm really happy that kind of mistake happened. It kind of broadened my eye even more. Um, but it was one of those things where it just, it was really cool to have that on hand. So I have a compost pumpkin over here. I think it's a pumpkin. I'm pretty positive it's a pumpkin. I threw a whole pumpkin <laughs> in the compost pile last fall and it's timed really good where if it is a pumpkin, I should have fall pumpkins and I've never been successful with pumpkins because vine borer is typically an issue here and I've just kind of given up. But that would have been planted after the vine borer would have been an issue um, and it was planted at like the exact time. So. I'm going to leave it and I really hope I get some fall pumpkins. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Oh, she's such a pretty girl. Over the last three years, I've trained her to come outside with me. She's an indoor cat only, minus these little tidbits. You guys see her outside with me. So I started off by bringing her just outside for five minutes every here or there. And whenever she would go in a no-no zone, I would give her like a three strikes, you're out. And every time she would go into the house, anytime she would try to act up or go somewhere she wasn't supposed to go because I really want to keep her safe. There's a lot of cars that go back and forth around here. So that really, she started to get the hang of it after about six months or so. And for the most part, she's really good. I still wouldn't trust if my eyes weren't on her because she's very curious, but she listens really well. So it's really fun to bring her out so she can enjoy it. She does bother me more around this time of year because she really does enjoy being outside so much, but it's so much fun to, be able to enjoy the garden with her. So when it comes to putting the girls up for bed, they will naturally go to bed themselves, but to get them into the run to where I feel safe going in for the day, I bribe them with a treat. Come on, they're really good at following. There you go, go. Just grab their extra bit of fence here and close and lock this door. All right. I like to dump this if I remember. That way there's just not water sitting. They get it fresh every morning anyway. And then I close this back up. They got grubs today. Well, the sun has officially set. I need to head inside, eat some dinner, take a shower. It is disgustingly muggy outside with zero wind. So I'm ready for a shower, but thank you guys so much for joining me this evening as I did random things around the garden. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye.